Good evening, nurse. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed, the new surgeon here at the Pembroke. Dr. Swansea has already told us about you, sir. I'm Nurse Gwyneth Brannigan. Welcome to the Pembroke Hospital. Thank Did you, Nurse really? Brannigan. It's a good thing I wasn't hoping to keep a low profile. All members of staff have already read about your new blood transfusion technique. Dr. Swansea made sure of that. I see. Well, I'm a little surprised, but I suppose I'll just have to deal with this unexpected notoriety. You must know. Seriously, Dr. Blood Swansea, you are big Dr. mouth. Dr. Swansea's primary subject of research. He is convinced it is the future. Well, thank you for saying so. I have a quick personal question to ask you. Dr. Tippett does praise you, doesn't he? Why does Dr. Tippett claim you're the main reason he keeps working, despite his fatigue? If it wasn't for him, I probably would have left the Pembroke years ago. Dr. Tippett does not think of you as just a nurse anymore, does he? If you're suggesting he's not taking my gender into consideration when it comes to medical practice and knowledge, I really hope he doesn't. That's not quite what I meant. How about you tell me about Dr. Tippett's medical error? Tell me what Dr. Tippett did. I know his mistake caused a patient's death. If I had not covered up his error, Dr. Tippett would have been fired from this hospital. I could not let that happen. You can't allow your emotions to dictate your conduct concerning patients, Nurse Brannock. Look around you, Dr. Reed. Do you really think we can afford to lose a brilliant practitioner like Dr. Tippett in our situation? No. No, we probably can't, unfortunately. I understand what what they did and why they did it. Unfortunately, uh, it's one of those crappy situations here where, unfortunately, we need the doctor and we need Nurse Brannigan. I can't say I approve of what you did. But as a field surgeon, I know that some situations require you to bend the rules. I'm not proud of what I've done, but to contain the epidemic must be our priority, so we can't afford to lose Dr. Tibbetts. Yes, you're right. So, is there anything else we can ask her? Uh, no, not for now. Goodbye, nurse. Now, Dr. Reed does does have a bit of a, the grizzly vampire look to him, to be perfectly honest. Let's go find Dr. Tippett's, shall we? Oh, Clay! So glad to see you're okay, you knob. Alright, Doctor, you've made a Gertlush massive mistake, haven't you? Good evening, Doctor. Dr. Reed, any good news to share? Unfortunately not, Dr. Tippett. You've done a whoopsie, haven't you? Kokoran, I want you to tell me about Mr. Connor. How did he die? What happened? He was my patient. He died because of my mistake. That's the blunt truth. What did you do? What was the nature of the mistake? It was a twofold error. My diagnosis was wrong and the administered dosage was too strong. Who was this patient? I don't know. Some sick man from the docks, maybe a fisherman. I had no time to talk with him. No one claimed the body. Why not stop practicing? Are you mad? I killed that man, I admit it, and it won't happen again. I have saved so many lives since then. Well, does it make up for it? Hmm. Now, we can cover, but we have an option about this. I will cover for you, Dr. Tibbetts, by keeping what happened to Mr. Connor to myself. I... I don't know what to say, actually. I can't exactly force you to become my accomplice. You didn't force me. This is my decision to make. I believe you're still of use to the hospital, considering the situation. Then I can make you this promise. As soon as the epidemic is eradicated, I will resign. Well, there we go. He gave us some money because that's how this sort of rolls, I guess. And uh, Goodbye, we've solved Dr. that. Tippett. Goodbye, Dr. Tippett. Don't kill anyone else while I'm away. Now, there's a couple of people we haven't spoke to. There's, as you can see, there's some patients there. The glowing thing here tells us that we can overhear something that's quite useful. So shall we do so? A couple of patients we haven't met yet. Well, one patient and his mother. How can I be sure I'll not find your unconscious body in the house again? I promise you, you'll not find my unconscious body. For God's sake, how can you say such a thing? How can you refuse to listen? I tried to warn you for so long. No, 
I won't let my only son die. You promised me you'll stay alive. Your son lied to you, like the whole world lies to us. Well, interesting. Mortimer Goswick. Now, we haven't met Mortimer, but Mortimer intended to kill himself. Now, in this day and age, that would get you, you know, in our day and age, that would get you help and discussion, among other things. Who's this? Hmm, some ilk person. But, back in 1918, we would probably get you sent to a place not so pleasant. Let's put it that way. So we should pay a quick visit and say hello to Mortimer before we continue. There's a couple of doctors we haven't seen yet, but again, we don't necessarily have to uh, talk to everyone all at once. Hello. Good evening. I'm Dr. Reed. Can I help at all? No. Really? Why are you here then? I don't want to talk. My throat hurts too much. I suppose that this pain is the reason you're here. Is someone taking care of you? Yes. And no. Could you at least tell me your name, sir? Mortimer. Mortimer Goswick. Now, Mortimer has a disease, so we can ask him about that. Do you need any help? I'm afraid I may, sir. I don't mean to be a burden. Now, at the moment, we can check for details. So Mortimer has the fatigue. We only have one treatment for fatigue right now, and I don't know if I'm supposed to do that, or it might muss it, muck up my main quest. So I'm not going to give that to him I right now. I will see you later. So we can uh, suss things out. Now, we can ask Mortimer about why he tried to kill himself, for example. Admitted, Mortimer. Your mother had you hospitalized here because you tried to kill yourself. Yes, it's true. All right, then. This is the first time we've really shared information about your case. Shall we call this progress? Call it what you want, Dr. Reed. You can trust me, Doc. But I said, can I help you at all, Mortimer? It's probably a better thing. Can I help you in any way, Mr. Goswick? I wrote a letter for my mother. She was supposed to read it after... After my death. But... I suppose she doesn't have to read it now. I see. And is this letter still near the place where you tried to take your own life? Yes. And I don't want anyone reading my last words. I mean, I'm still here. If you bring me back that letter, then perhaps we'll talk. Understood, Mortimer. We've got a new side quest. So what I we have can to do. go now, sir. But don't hesitate to contact me if you need any help. Now, just so I can get the uh, the name on my my list here. Good evening, madam. We'll talk to his mother. Can I help you? It's my son who needs you, sir. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. How can I help your son? I'm Beatrice Goswick, mother of Mortimer Goswick. Could you check on him, please, Dr. Reed? I've heard much of your talents as a physician. Uh, well, bye. Goodbye, Mrs. Goswick. Which is pretty funny. Can you help him? Goodbye, Mrs. Goswick. Uh, peace. Right, let's talk to, uh, Dorothy. Finally, you've returned, Doctor. Did you find anything of value? Well, luckily. Yes, nurse. You've worked your first miracle, Doctor. Now, this patient here needs immediate treatment. Duty calls. When the storm has passed, I'll show you how to mix the remedy yourself with the same basic ingredients. Many thanks, Doctor. When you've finished, you ought to report to Dr. Swansea in his office. He's been looking for you. Seemed pressing. Sounds good. Diseases. Understood. So who are we curing? Don't waste your time with me. I will not let you down, my boy. Uh, are we... Healing anyone particular? Let's find out. Oh no, we've just got to go talk to Edgar. This guy doesn't count as an NPC. He's not important. This chap, we should probably talk to later. That's, uh, Harvey. And there's a couple of doctors we've yet to speak to, but we're going to worry about that a little bit later. Remember, blood will provide you a massive XP boost. Uh, it actually shows you how much XP. I mean, look how much XP it took to get uh, to where we are right now. Consider some of these people have like 2,000 XP. Just like Thelma. We just munched Thelma. That's immediately 1,700. 6,000, uh, 3,000 for Sean. We can't eat everybody yet. It's dictated by story progress, essentially. Mainly so you can't break the story by eating the wrong person. However, let's finish off our little jaunt right now by speaking to Edgar. Please, Jonathan, come in. Oh, thank you. Too kind. Fascinating, is it not? In the last decade, so many mysteries have been brought to light with our microscopes. The human body. Biology's penultimate frontier. 
The more we explore its boundaries, the less we're able to trace a clear line between life and death. <laughs> you, my friend, have a foot in both countries. The view must be vertiginous. It's at least as vertiginous as chatting about vampires with you, I would say. This must be all so new to you. This area of town, the hospital, a brand new life. How stimulating it must be. I wish I could share your enthusiasm, Dr. Swansea, but my condition defies scientific categorization. Undead, unalive, immortality defies logic. I cannot express my thrill at this serendipitous turn of events. The world's most eminent specialist in blood transfusions, a vampire. One might say a gift from heaven. This is no gift. I'm a living paradox. Your words bring me comfort. We're going to be nice to Dr. Swanzu. It may seem strange, but your words have brought me some comfort here. Forgive me. I've been an admirer of your work for a long time, and now you are so much more than a brilliant physician. And please, call me Edgar. Uh, well, no need to apologize, Edgar. It's not a problem. There is no need to apologize, hey, Edgar. Hey, that's what I said. You offered me sanctuary when I had none. Very well. I have a task for you, Jonathan. Something that will require all your newfound skills. Please, go on. The Pembroke only survives through the generosity of our benefactors. Unfortunately, our main donor has found herself in a bit of a bind. Now, if you could help her out... A spokesman or politician is what you need. That's not my calling. And until I come to understand what has happened to me, I require discretion. Discretion is in order, Jonathan. Lady Ashbury has recently received rather indelicate correspondence that, if revealed, would jeopardize her position. And you would like me to eradicate this threat? By the stole, of course not. I would just like you to pay her a visit. Her ladyship is certainly near the tents outside, tending the sick. You can't miss her. Look for someone impossibly delicate. Accepted. I'll see what kind of trouble Lady Ashbury is in. Well, we got a new uh, quest to do, a new main quest, which is help this Lady Ashbury out. Uh, I'm going to, once again, if you want to read about the rare species of vampires, an extraordinarily long piece of writing here, please do... Uh, have a look. I do recommend, if you're really enjoying the game, to read these uh, bits of uh, flavour. I'll read this one, it's a bit shorter. Dear Dr. Swansea, I must inform you of my deepest reservations concerning the Dr. Thoreau Strickland and Harvey Finnick case. Mr. Finnick has been hospitalised after a severe work injury. He may permanently lose the use of his arm if not treated adequately. Dr. Strickland claims that a surgical procedure may save the man's arm completely. I say it may also sever its functions for good if complications arise. Our young colleague is an audacious and daring surgeon who might prove to be a great professional in a few years. But for now, he lacks the skills to perform such a risky procedure. Need I remind you of the mistakes he's made in the past? Since Dr. Strickland refuses to listen to me, I strongly advise you to forbid him to perform such a hazardous experiment. Very respectfully, Dr. Waverly Aykroyd. Now, we haven't met Dr. Thuru Strickland and Dr. Waverly Aykroyd yet, but we certainly will, and reasonably shortly as well, probably in the next set. And, uh, the letter of Rakesh Shinada. Dear Dr. Swansea, I'll be glad to manage the temporary morgue as soon as it's opened, as I've already told you, I was a doctor during the war, and I'll be glad to serve my country again. I know it's not the same as being a physician for the, de uh, for the dead as it is for the living, but I believe it is important to welcome and take good care of our departed too. Rest assured I will do my best to fully perform this new duty to the best of my ability. Concerning the question of my qualifications, I'm sorry I can't give you anything more valu valuable than my parole. I swear to you that my regiment made me a doctor during the war, and I saved many lives. If my word is not enough, then you can contact the military administration to verify my experience and skills. They will confirm that even if I never followed any medical studies, the war taught me what a doctor really needs to know. So we've met, we've also got a couple of hints for some various people around the, the hospital already. Now, we also, if I bring up the map of London, also have a side quest available to us, which is, uh, if I track it, uh, oops, wrong button, track. So if we go back to the map, we can see that Mortimer's house is right there. Now, I'm going to pay, I was going to stop, but I think I'm going to go pay a visit to Mortimer's house just before we carry on. 
Oops. Now, we have a lot of XP we need to evolve, but I want to do a few bits and bobs before we decide to do that. Now, the lovely Lady Ashbury is in that tent. You can get a, catch a glimpse of her there. Who could it be? Hmm. Well, details, details. Not important right now. What is important is that we spit on clay. Ptooey! And head our way down. We do need to upgrade our weapons as well, though. That's also really important. Once we're out of the line of sight of the hospital, we can sort of scoot a little bit. That's the back entrance to the hospital. Mortimer's house should be just around here. Theory. Uh, Mortimer's place seemingly here, I'd say. This looks like a hideout to me. The Goswick's flat. Piz has been ransacked since they've been away. Dear, my dear mother, when you find this letter, I'll be gone. I want you to know that I didn't leave. I don't leave because of you. I leave this world because of the crushing weight that existence puts upon me. These times are too much for me. Sometimes I feel like Baldier's verses have been written as an echo from my own heart. When the low, heavy sky weighs like a lid upon the spirit, aching for the light, and all the wide horizon's line is hid by a black day sadder than any night. It is as beautiful as is painful, mother. I can't suffer it any more. I don't want you to try and convince me, and it would only delay the inevitable, for I would do it again by any chance you managed to save me once. Farewell, your son Mortimer. In this letter, Mortimer Goswick does nothing to hide his desire to die. I could give it to his mother, but doing so would betray his trust. Indeed. We have a sort of uh, a uh, dilemma to make. If you'd like to read about uh, Fertile is the Belly of the Beast, so you can find out about how uh, sexual intercourse between a human and vampire rarely produces any birth, and uh, how vampires transfer their powers there, which is quite useful to know for us as well. It's locked. Now, interestingly, lots of the important characters have safes in their homes. We only tend to get their keys if they die. Something to be aware of. And, uh... What we can also do is use this workbench while we're here and potentially upgrade. Oh, we can't quite upgrade that yet, but what about my used prone stake? So that we can upgrade to level 2, which is a massive increase to the amount of stun that it does, which is lovely. And we can increase stun by aluminium powder and aluminium shards, which of course we do want to do. That means our, st our, st our stake is just that much more efficient. However, of course, we've used some parts up to do so, but it is worth it. We want to have that upgraded. Now, we can't upgrade this because we haven't got any springs yet, but killing some humans will solve that problem. What we can also do is dissolve some... To recycle some bits and bobs, which we really want to do. We can sell some of these bits, but again, some of these things we really do need. So, small bottle gets some glass vials. Cheap gin gets us some boxes of pills. Gets us... And, ooh, a cigarette case. Very nice. Again, selling it can be quite quite worth it. But now, suddenly, we can make lots and lots of uh, cures for fatigue and other bits and bobs. So we're actually going to make a spare fatigue, just in case we need it. I don't think we need anything else just yet. Plus, we can give us some uh, HP regeneration, should we want to. And I think it'd be a very, very sensible thing to do as well, to have at least one. Excellent. Now, I don't know if there's a downstairs to the flat that we can actually get to. No, so that's pretty much it. What we're going to do then, I'm going to stop the set. Ooh, I'm going to raid that money first of all, of course. Five shillings is five shillings. No, no, I'm not going to let it waste. I want to say thank you ever so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I hope the volume increase has made a difference. I've only done it by a little bit, by about two decibels, but it should be enough to sort of assist. If that's still not enough, I can keep going up, but I'm a bit worried it'll, uh, the combat sounds might drown out, but it's kind of hard to tell. So you'll have to let me know. Thank you ever so much for watching. I love the comments. I read every single one. Thank you so much for leaving them. And uh, I will see you all next time. Thank you for watching, everyone. Bye for now.